Hey everyone, it's Zinnia here, and today I wanted to show you part two of how to make a shop in Scratch. In this part, I'll show how to add game upgrades to the shop, how to add items that the player can buy multiple of, and how to make items that the player can only unlock once. So yeah, let's get started. So I'll start with the code that I made in part one. So if you haven't watched that video, I definitely recommend it. But basically, we have a shop we can open up, and there's a red shirt we can buy for the player. Now, let me show you how to add an item that doesn't just affect the appearance of the character, but affects the gameplay. So as an example, I will make a speed boost. To create a new button, I will actually right click on this button sprite and click duplicate, and that creates a new button I can edit. So here you can put in whatever you want the name of your other item to be. I'll put in speed boost, and then put in what you want the cost to be. I'll make it five. And then the other things you have to do to make this new button in your shop is change anywhere where this price two appears, change it to the price of your item. So for me, it's five, I'll put a five there. And then here I will change coins by negative five when the player buys the speed boost because it should take five coins away from the player. And then instead of setting bought red shirt to true, I will make a new variable and call it bought speed boost and I will set that variable to true. Oh, and you know, when the game starts, I will also set uh, bot speed boost to false. So when the game starts, the game knows the player hasn't bought the speed boost yet. So now let's make it so that once the player has bought the speed boost, it affects the game. So similar to what we did with the red shirt in the past video, we can use an if else block to make the character do something different depending on whether they've bought the speed boost yet. So I'll drag out an if else block and I'll put in the blocks if bought speed boost equals true. And now we just have to think about how do we want this to affect our game? With the bought red shirt, we had it change the costume, but how should the speed boost affect the character? And if you'll notice here, when the right arrow is pressed, it changes X by 15, so it moves the player 15. How about if the player has bought the speed boost, we can change X by say 30. Otherwise we can change X by 15 as normal. And now we want this to happen when the right arrow key is pressed. So every time the right arrow key is pressed, the player will check, you know, have I bought the speed boost yet? And that will affect their speed. So right now they're moving slower because they haven't bought the speed boost. And if I buy the speed boost, then they will move faster. Let's also make this happen for the left direction as well. So for that, I will put this aside and say, if bot speed boost equals true, then I will change X by negative 30 because we want it to go in this direction, opposite direction from that. Otherwise, just negative 15, the usual speed. So let's try that out. And now it can go fast in both directions. Also, I mean, it's your game. You could make the speed boost go as fast as you want. You could make it be 100 or yeah, really whatever you want. So now we've got a speed boost. Now let me show you how to make an item that the player can buy multiple of in the shop. So let's say that in my game, I want the player to be able to buy cabbages and I want them to be able to buy as many cabbages as they want. So I will again, just right click and duplicate this button and do the same things as before. I made the cabbage cost one coin. And uh, now here's how I can make it possible to buy multiple. Instead of here, when the player buys a cabbage, setting a variable to true, I will actually delete this block and I'm going to just make a variable called cabbages that will keep track of how many cabbages the player has bought. And when the player buys a cabbage in this piece of the code, I will just change cabbages by one. So let's give that a try. I can now buy as many cabbages as I want until I'm all out of money. And of course I could get some more coins and buy some more cabbages. And actually the last thing to do is I'm gonna to go to the player and when the game restarts, I will have the cabbages reset to zero. And so, you know, it's up to you what you would want the player to do with these items in your game once they've bought them. But that is how you could make something in the shop that the player can buy multiples of. And then the last thing I wanted to show is how to add an item to the shop that the player can only buy once. So let's say that you want the player to only be able to buy the speed boost once, because there's really no point in buying the same speed boost again once they've already bought it. So the way I would do that is here in the speed boost sprite, which I've clicked on, 
I will say, after the player, you know, plays the chime sound and buys the speed boost, I will have this button hide. So let's try that out. So once I buy the speed boost, it hides. And then let's try closing and reopening the shop. Now you'll see the speed boost comes back. And the reason this is happening is when this buy speed boost button gets the message, go to shop, it always shows. Now, if you'll remember, we have this variable bought speed boost that keeps track of whether the player has bought the speed boost yet. So what I'll do is I'm going to drag out an if else block and I will say if bought speed boost is true, then we can hide this button. It'll go away. But if the player hasn't bought the speed boost yet, then let's show this button so they can buy it. So I'll put that instead. And now let's try it out. So let's go to the shop and there we go. Now it hides once you've already bought this item. And if you wanted to add an item in that shop to replace it like a mega speed boost, you just have to make that button. And then here, when you receive go to shop, say, if the bot speed boost is true, then show this button because now it should replace that other button. Otherwise, hide it. Oh, and one last thing I wanted to show you is how I made these buttons glow when you hover over them and how I made them be grayed out if you don't have enough coins to buy that item. The way I did it is just depending on the cost of the item, if the player has less coins than that cost, then I set the ghost effect to 40. So actually, let me just pause this. If I set the ghost effect to 40, that makes it look faded. Um, but if I set the ghost effect to zero, then that makes it look not faded. And to make them glow, I made it so that if it's touching the mouse pointer, it sets the brightness effect to 15. So that makes it lighter. Otherwise, it just sets the brightness effect to zero. And I made it only do the glowing thing if the player has enough coins to buy the item. So if it's grayed out, then it doesn't glow when you hover on it. So that is what I wanted to show you for part two of how to make a shop in Scratch. And yeah, if you have any other questions, just feel free to let me know. And I'll see you next time. And Scratch on!